All right, brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it as we study His Word. Now, today's Bible lesson, we are going to answer this one very baffling question which always comes up in the minds of Christians. And uh, many people usually ask, why is the virgin birth so important? Why is the virgin birth of Jesus Christ so important like this? And uh, this is what you're going to study. I don't know if you're ready. Are you ready? <laughs> so let's let's get started. Let's 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 dive in. Okay. Now we have to understand that the doctrine of the virgin birth is uh, crucially important, absolutely important. Let's look at Isaiah seven verse fourteen. The Bible says, uh, mm, it, "It says, therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign: Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son." And shall call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. A virgin shall conceive. That's really important. And we see the same confirmed when that virgin conceived in Matthew 1 verse 23. The Bible says, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Are you seeing a confirmation of the same in the book of Matthew also, just before Jesus was born. And also we can see the same in Luke one twenty seven, and uh, and also in Luke one thirty four. Let me just read you this. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That, that's Mary. All right, now let's first look at how scripture describes the event. In response to Mary's question, how will this be? We see the angel Gabriel replying. And he says, in Luke 1.35, he says, uh, and I quote, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You see how it would happen? And we understand that the angel encourages Joseph not to fear marrying Mary with uh, these words. He says in Matthew one twenty. he tells Joseph, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You see, just like all men will always want to run away when they see such a situation, but it was a way of um, God trying to encourage Joseph. No, don't worry, it's okay. And uh, Matthew states that the virgin, that virgin was to be found with child of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was not just any other ordinary man. He was born by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was half man and half God. We can see this in Matthew 1.18 and Galatians 4.4. 4. Because the Bible tells us very well. Let, let's just read Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under law. God sent his son, born of a woman, his son. So Jesus is the son of God. This is really important to understand this. And from these passages, it is certainly very clear that Jesus' birth was the result of the Holy Spirit working within Mary's body. The immaterial, which is called the Spirit, and the material, which is Mary's womb, were both involved. Mary, of course, could not impregnate herself. And in that sense, she was simply a vessel. Only God could perform the miracle of incarnation. However, if we deny a physical connection between Mary and Jesus, 
it would imply that Jesus was not truly human. And scripture teaches us that Jesus was fully human with physical body like ours. And this he received from Mary. At the same time, Jesus was fully God with an eternal sinless nature. Let me read to you and show you that Jesus was fully God. You see, there are people who refuse and they say, Jesus was not God. No, he was just some guy in Jerusalem and stuff like that. No, look at uh, the book of John 1 verse 14. The Bible says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus became flesh and he was the word of God and the Bible tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God John 1 1 so that one tells us if this same word is the one who was manifest then it is God who was manifest in the flesh let me show you also first Timothy 3 16 and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in, uh, in the world, received up in glory. God was manifest in the flesh. Still not believing? Let me show you something else. Let's check in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14. It reads, For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is, the devil. And verse 15 says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all, were all what? Let me check this verse. Mm -hmm. were all their lifetime subject to bondage for verily as he took not on him the nature of angels but took on him the seed of Abraham wherefore in all things it be behoved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God to make reconciliations for the sins of the people seeing the point Jesus was fully God and fully man. All right? And he was not born in sin. No. <laughs> he had no sin nature. He did not have sin. There are other people who say, then, then if Jesus was a man, then it, he was a sinner. We are all sinners. We lie every day. We, we steal every day. We do wrong things every day. No. Jesus, he was not a sinner. The Bible tells us that in Hebrews 7 verse 26 it says for such an high priest be became us who is holy harmless and defiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who is that high priest jesus and it would seem that the sin nature is passed down from generation to generation through the father so if sin is passed through the fathers and the father of Jesus was God, then God is not a sinner. Are you seeing the point here? Are you seeing the point here? So sin is passed from the fathers. And that's why the Bible tells us in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Sin came by Adam one man and through another man who was righteous we no longer have sin look at verse 17 of Romans 5 it says for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ Look at verse 19. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Who is that one? 
that one is Jesus. And we understand that the birth, uh, the, the birth of uh, Jesus, the virgin birth, was circumvented by the transmission of the sin nature and allowed the eternal God to become a perfect man. I don't know if this did make some sense to you to understand why the virgin birth is very important because Jesus took the nature of God the Father and also took the nature of Mary the human so Jesus had two natures in him and if Jesus could have been fully man without uh, of course he was fully man yeah but if his father could have been a human being then he could have been born of sin because that could have meant is from the lineage of Adam. But Jesus was not from the lineage of Adam. He, he was a seed from God. So you see why the virgin birth is, is really important? I hope that lesson has really added something unto you and you've been able to learn something. Hope it was worth it. <laughs>